Joining us now to discuss the increase in hate crime in the United States is Zainab al suwaj Executive Director of the American Islamic Congress. Sean Halper is a Jewish historian and postdoctoral associate at Yale University. Also with us, Arjun Sefi is an adjunct professor of law at Georgetown University Law Center and Vanderbilt University Law. Arjun has drafted legislation and is writing a book on hate violence. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Uh, Sean, as we noted in the introduction there, there's been a sharp increase in the number of hate crimes um, in the last few weeks since Donald Trump was elected, even before that, actually. Um, incidents of racist, religious, xenophobic harassment. Is there a connection here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a, absolutely a connection with, between Donald Trump's rhetoric and, uh, and these acts of hate. Uh, Donald Trump, since the beginning of his campaign, has been steadily uh, sending winks and nods to the right, the far right uh, white nationalist groups uh, that he's trying to court or that he was trying to court as a campaigner and also as a president, uh, you know, ignoring uh, the Jewish victims of the Holocaust was a clear wink and nod uh, to these supporters. They feel emboldened. This is their, uh, right. this is their moment to assert themselves and, uh, and they're doing so. Right, there was no reference to the Jewish victims in that speech at the Holocaust Memorial. That's right. There was no, no reference to it. And even when Donald Trump came out and condemned uh, the cemetery violence that we saw, the, the desecration of those cemeteries, uh, he still suggested that his political opponents might be uh, responsible, that is, the Democratic Party, uh, for, uh, those, for, those, for those acts. Right, Zainab, right from the outset of his campaign, Donald Trump has targeted Muslims. First, he said that he would ban Muslims from coming into the country. Then they would be subject to extreme vetting. He used the term Islamic terrorism, just branding everyone with the same brush. To what extent has that kind of very fiery, uh, irresponsible rhetoric, really, uh, contributed to the rise in hate crimes? Well, uh, the number of hate crimes in, around the country has been on the rise uh, for the past few months. And this number is um, actually uh, is a shocking to, to many Muslim and non-Muslim at the same time. Um, the, what he said about um, Muslim, Islamist uh, and uh, extremists in, in Islam, we're all against that, even as Muslim, because we consider ourselves the first victims of uh, radical Islam. And we all agree on what he said about, about that. But we have to differentiate between the regular people and incident uh, and innocent uh, uh, citizens in this country who want just to, to make it a living and they want to practice their daily life just as normal. And uh, in, some, in some areas in the, in the country, it's been impossible for, for Muslims to do that. And we have several incidents, especially in uh, college campuses. Uh, we have a program there called Project Noor, and this program is in about 80-some colleges around the country. And many of students, you know, they've been uh, subject to this kind of, uh, of hate uh, crimes and hate speech uh, as well. So Muslim students are being targeted on college campuses by fellow students? Some of them, yes. Arjun, if we look at what's happened over the past few weeks, if we look at the election campaign itself, actually, it seems that Donald Trump has tapped into very deep resentment, especially among low-income whites in this country. And, you know, he feels that they feel that they've lost jobs, they've, um, the American dream is slipping away from them, and the implication from Donald Trump is that that is happening because of immigration in this country, because of immigrants coming in illegally into this country. Um, to what extent has that contributed to the kind of violence and resentment that we see? To some degree, um, I would begin any conversation on hate violence uh, by focusing on criminalization and all the various ways in which the Trump administration has criminalized Muslim, Arab, South Asian, Sikh Americans, bans, walls, raids. These don't happen in a vacuum. If the government treats us like second-class citizens, so will the American public. Um, we have targets on our back, in part because of Donald Trump, because of his rhetoric, and because of his criminalization policies. Sean, uh, do we have a clear idea of how serious this problem is? Because even the FBI, is, which has some figures, but it says that its numbers are pretty abys uh, abysmal, as it put it. And there's also a dispute over what constitutes a hate crime. 
Yeah, I mean, what we have uh, is a president who's trying to poke uh, doubt in, uh, in the media and in major democratic institutions uh, that, are, that are telling this story. Uh, but we have really well-respected institutions that specialize in tracking hate crimes. So we do know uh, that this is not a fantasy. This is not uh, some hyped up story in the media. Uh, this is real. And uh, we need to you know, have faith in, in these organizations and institutions and these experts uh, who, who are looking into this kind of thing. Right, and Zainab, to Arjun's point about uh, you know, the administration talking in a certain way about minority groups, talking in a certain way about Muslims, for instance. And you know, we have people in this administration who've been saying things like, uh, we are in an outright war against jihadists, Islam, and Islamic fa uh, fascism. That was Steve Bannon, a very senior advisor to the president, said mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I mean, this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, sentences came out of uh, the uh, administration and personnel in there. And uh, as I said in the beginning, we are all against this uh, radical Islam and, and radical um, Islamists who are actually promoting the uh, very extreme kind of uh, their own, own interpretation of Islam. But that doesn't mean that um, innocent people in this country or around the country, or I'm sorry, around the world, uh, should be uh, punished because of uh, minority that they do not represent the majority of Muslim uh, nation around the world. Arjun, why are Sikhs being targeted in the country? And this is not a new thing. It's been happening for some time. Um, it led one magazine, actually a popular online magazine in India, Quartz India, to say that it's a time of fear and foreboding for Indians in America. Are Sikhs with turbans and with beards being mistaken for Muslims here? or? Um, is it open war on all people of color, or is it all of the above? I think it's all the above. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think right now it's open season on anyone who looks different. And observant Sikh Americans who have turbans and beards look different. Um, and that makes them easy targets. Um, at this moment in time, uh, I prefer not to necessarily focus on the fact that Sikhism is different from Islam, for example. I prefer to focus instead on the fact that uh, Sikhs, Muslims, Arabs, and so many other communities are being treated um, with suspicion, are being treated as second-class citizens. And that really breeds the environment in which we become targets. And specifically on this issue of tracking of hate crimes, it's true. The FBI does try to track hate crimes committed against our communities, for example. But reporting of hate crimes is still voluntary. It's not mandatory. So the Associated Press recently found that something like 30 to 35 percent of police departments across the country don't report hate crimes. So the data that we do have is woefully inadequate as well. So it's the responsibility of local police forces to report that to the federal authorities, in this case, the FBI. Exactly. Senab, uh, what do you think uh, is the message that is sent when Donald Trump says things like, I'm going to ban all Muslims, uh, I'm going to subject them to extreme vetting. Then, of course, he came out with that travel ban. Mm -hmm. It was subsequently revised. He's come out with another, another travel ban. But what, what kind of message does that send? Well, uh, certainly a majority of the Muslim, uh, Muslim uh, population in, in, in this country and uh, around the world, they felt that they are not wanted and they are, should be uh, deported. And many of them, they, scare, they were scared and they were thinking, oh, maybe uh, it's not a safe haven for us anymore. Uh, especially after the travel ban was uh, was there, and um, uh, many uh, friends, family, and uh, uh, community members that we've been in touch with, uh, they express this kind of fear, this kind of uh, uncertainty about their future here. Uh, after. Uh, I always, we always uh, use these uh, programs to work on interfaith, interethnic understanding, and working on issues of hate speech and hate crimes for many years, explain to them and trying to uh, deliver the message that this country is under um, uh, rules and regulation, and there is a system, and there is a law, and there is a constitution. So these kind of uh, uh, laws you cannot really uh, uh, overcome and, and just uh, uh, deport people just like that without any, any reason or any obvious or against the, uh, against the constitution. Many people were 
the fear that they have inside uh, about their future, about their family members who are overseas. They, they couldn't come, or many uh, uh, people who have been stranded at the airports mm -hmm. or around the, the country, uh, gave a, a very strong message that uh, they are not welcomed. They are not um, uh, welcome citizens, even if, if they are here. Yet, there are several programs that we do and many other organizations do try to overcome this kind of and obstacle. And these interfaith barriers. programs that you're That's talking right. about, on a practical level, how mm -hmm. do they work? They work with, uh, now, it used to be just only on a community level, but right. now we get to involve uh, law enforcement uh, as well. And uh, they come and they share uh, their thoughts and views and how to protect citizens and especially youth. And as I said, we have a program called Project Noor in these college campuses. And this program, actually, we've been uh, heavily investing in these thousands of students around the country to work uh, to open that um, uh, way of back and forth communication between them, their families, their communities, and law enforcement in the country, and to understand their rights uh, uh, in here as well, and to be vocal about it. And Sean, what kind of countermeasures can be taken to uh, combat the kind of attacks that we're seeing, especially the attacks we've seen, as we described at the beginning, on Jewish cemeteries, you know, the vandalization of Jewish in institutions? Uh, we did hear the president condemn those attacks uh, during his State of the Union speech. We did hear Vice President Mike Pence condemned them as well. But was that too little too late? Um, should the White House be doing something more? Yeah, I mean, it was too little too late. Yeah. And it uh, came with, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, this winking and nodding to mm. white nationalists uh, when President Trump uh, suggested that his political opponents were behind uh, the defamation. Uh, so that, uh, that's been consistently uh, his method uh, since the campaign, to send these winks and nods while at the same time uh, trying to appear civil on, on the anti-Semitism question. Um, he, you know, remember he retweeted the picture of Hillary against the background of an Israeli flag or a Jewish star, saying that she was the most corrupt politician ever. Um, you know, the, the removal of the Jews from, uh, from mentioning the Holocaust, that's a form of uh, soft core Holocaust denial yeah. um, that they're engaging with. So, and that is, you know, he's the president of the United States. Did you get the feeling that he's actually responding to political pressure rather than coming out with, you know, this is what America is, it's a tolerant society, it is a very mixed society, um, you know, rather than him saying it, this is not who, not who Meeting we are. Meeting his attack yeah. on political yeah. correctness. Yeah. 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 Um, it would, perhaps, but there's a pattern here, and it's a pattern that emboldens these right-wing groups. Uh, so his attack on political correctness actually uh, ironically proves the importance of political speech mm -hmm. uh, because we see the intensity and the intensification of these acts of violence at a moment where he's saying political speech doesn't matter. But in fact, it does. And we see that. We see that you know, these omissions lead to real violence. Um, yeah. And in terms of uh, combating it, um, first of all, it's important to understand that attacks on all minority communities right. are linked. Uh, Anti-Semitism can only thrive uh, when, when other minorities are being attacked as well. Um, there's been a sustained attack on truth and a promotion of conspiracy theories. Uh, and that's a, that's a place where anti-Semitism can thrive. So we need to reinforce the institutions that are part of democratic life. We need to have faith in the media. We have, need to have faith in institutions and norms that Donald Trump uh, is trying to attack. Are you worried that the media is not giving this particular problem enough attention? Um, you know, I think that it's, uh, it, it's more a question of understanding what the problem is and why Donald Trump is attacking the truth right. and why uh, th these things are appearing at this moment. Um, it's strategic. It is very much about undermining American influence in the world, about uh, undermining the post-World War II uh, moment you know, of, of American dominance in the world. Um, the Holocaust has been a central pillar in the moral understanding of civil rights and human rights. Uh, and he's really taking a page from the Russians in you know, promoting this kind of soft core denial uh, and promoting these, these right-wing uh, ideologies. Okay, we're going to have to take a break right now. Uh, what more can be done to curb the increase in hate crimes against minorities? That's coming up on The Heat. We're going to be on a break right now.